thought seems to have gone wild, I think. Yep, <coughs> that's surely a lot. Anyway, um, tech row here. Just thought we'd have a, like, a hacking session here. You know, everybody knows the, well, some people know that the, um, <laughs> the very old Flash player, which is the basis for lots of very small and, uh, and nice little games, is um, actually finally going to be yeah, they, they at least say that. Finally, 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 it's going to be pulled um, from the browsers. So as of January um, 2021, it shouldn't work technically anymore. And I just said, oh, there are still lots of websites that host uh, as a solution that would be more permanent. So I've been playing around. First, I started to play around with. Um, the idea of um, Oracle VirtualBox and, um, and install a um, uh, Linux uh, distribution on it and then use remote desktop to be able to access it. And um, ran into all kinds of technical issues that one could possibly imagine. Looking at my notes. So I struggle with VirtualBox. First, I tried um, Linux Mint. Didn't really get that far with that. I couldn't get the um, the sound part of it to cooperate. And then I moved on to Debian, and I couldn't get that to work either. And then I moved on to Ubuntu, and I actually finally got a, an installation of Ubuntu with a configured remote desktop where the sound actually worked. And I got the sound to work in the remote desktop chef. But um, the performance was not very good. So now I've been um, working on moving over to um, Microsoft's Hyper-V, you know, with the same configuration of Ubuntu. And then I ran into an issue where Hyper-V is stealing the um, remote desktop connection to be um, for their own uses. So they... Um, they call it now. I'll have to check it out. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. Does it disappeared from the menu now. That's so strange. There we go. So you can use in um, Hyper-V, you have a, set, a, a mode called um, Enhanced Session. So basically you install your um, Ubuntu installation and then um, you, know, you can log in and use it through the user interface, no problem. But it hasn't got any advanced features, like you can't copy-paste and, and stuff like that. But you can, um, you can I install the Hyper-V tools. But well, then you need to switch to this enhanced mode, and, and actually the trick is that it that it hijacks the um, remote desktop um, environment for the, to to enable this advanced mode, so-called advanced mode. So I had to re-hijack it back, so that I could actually be able to log in with um, Microsoft's remote desktop, like from a remote machine. Oh. So anyway, um, and uh, the basically I've I've got it to the extent of the, the Ubuntu installation with 
um, the um, uh, Flash Player inst uh, installed, plugin installed, and um, Firefox and Chrome installed, and, and the Firefox performance is is actually very good. It's much better than um, VirtualBox. I mean, my idea is that the family members can take a remote desktop connection to um, this virtualized machine and then they can just play their flash games and then they can just disconnect when they don't want to play anymore. Well, I wouldn't have to try and hack the flash player implementations onto their workstation, onto their machine. We should actually go through this list. Probably half the com half the community will fall asleep if I go through this. That might be interesting. Let's see. Let's see if I can bring up my notes. Make the text a bit bigger, I think.
No one. That was... Okay, are we getting any picture back? Yeah, that was XSplit crashed. And when my XSplit fails, um, it usually fails when I'm sharing, when I'm trying to share a window, it doesn't matter what application window. And then it freezes the whole computer, literally freezes the whole computer. I mean, uh, it, no error message, nothing, it just everything stops working. And everything just stays static. And then I have to actually reboot the computer from scratch. Have to hit the off button, the power off button. Really annoying. Anyway, where were we? Um, let's hope it gives us a little bit more time this time. So, um, let's see if I make this bigger. Okay, we were into this, um, yeah, to tell it what port to use. So as you see, I changed the port from a socket to a um, to TCP. And it's listening on all all um, addresses for coming on this port. And then we just uh, restart XRDP, and then we log out. And um, but there's one thing that one really needs to watch: the one doesn't log in. If that one should log out from the session that one's working under. Because if you're going to log in now with remote desktop, then you, you, if you try and use the same user, you're very liable to end up with the black screen of death that many millions of people have seen based on search I've made on on, you, on Google. <laughs> So you can alternatively, you could, what you could do is that in the session you're in, you could create a new user and then use that new user for the remote desktop connection. Or then you log out and then uh, use the uh, remote desktop. Um, and then enhanced mode will be lost. So if you try and use enhanced mode from the menu, it's disabled. You won't be able to use it. I don't really care in this phase. I'm not going to be using it a lot using it locally on a, on the console. Uh, what else try? And then copy paste should work now in remote desktop. And then um, I went ahead and installed the, um, the, the basic flash plugin stuff. And uh, Firefox is already installed. And then I installed Chrome. Uh, yeah, so that has a few procedures of getting the latest Chrome package, and then you install Chromium or Chrome, and then we test this game. And then I was starting to install the um, the um, stuff that's needed for the um, to get the sound to work in the remote desktop session. And now I got my computer restarted, so. Everything's lost, so I wonder if I can find everything I need. Well, first I need to get the virtual machine started again. Let's see if I can salvage that problem. If I stop sharing that um, screen, I won't crash so quick. You will to just start this. Oh, it's running already. Okay, so then I could actually try and connect with my remote desktop. Okay, 105. That does not sound correct. That was 109. Looking pretty good. Oh, I could actually need to share that. Right. Patients setting up the virtual machine console. Where's my exploit? Ah, 
See? So that's um, the Ubuntu installation running on Hyper-V. And connected to by remote desktop. And I don't know why it's cutting the side of the window like that. Move it a bit. Somehow it's cutting in here. screen of death, so I was a bit concerned about. I might actually end up with that problem. Oh, not fun. Now, oh, why did XSplit have to crash the machine? I wonder if I power it down, that's the way that I got rid of that problem. Should have followed my own instructions and not used the same use. to try and power up down this one. See if I can get back into the remote desktop session. No, we need to log out. Log out, thank you. She logged in there. Okay, I'm officially logged out of that one. Out of the actual terminal. Let's see if we can actually log in to the
See, that's the black screen of death, where it, it somehow some file of other, probably it's a file or a flag or something gets set, which says that oh, this user is already logged in in another session, and then you can't. Um, you see, we're so used to in Windows that you know you can you can come in to a desktop session with RDP. With the with the desktop session active, and that's no problem. But in 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 it seems in Linux that's like a disaster. Like no, that that's not a supported except for VNC, and VNC is not remote de remote desktop protocol. But in, using remote desktop protocol, then then basically it, there's a total collision. So you need to make sure you're actually logged out of the set of the actual desktop session, and then you need to come in as a completely clean desktop session. Otherwise, the whole it collides, and then you get this black, black screen. But anyway, now we're back, and let's hope the um, XSplit crash uh, doesn't crash. And if XSplit crashes again, then um, so anyway, I explained everything down to um, um, I was working on. Um, the next step was to get the sound actually working. That's this one. And then what I did is I uh, to save him out. Let's just I think it missed the last. The, um, we got the development tools for um, Pulse Audio. In the worst case, it will it'll complain that the stuff is already installed. already installed and then, uh, just as luck might have it I lost the um, mm, I have to go get the stuff from VirtualBox the next steps so let's see um, Install build tools, install pulse audio itself. And pulse audio is actually it's installed already, so well, what we will do is we will try and install it just to see what it says. Because it's not really it's not there's no danger of trying to install something that's already installed. It'll just tell you that oh this is already installed. As you see, copy paste now works in our view. Yep, now it says that we already have the latest, and that's the one thirteen ninety nine, and that's what I remember. dependency, pulse audio build dependencies. Just have to check one more. 
Let's go. So I already did this installation in the virtual box. But I don't want to pull that virtual machine over because I want to start from, I want it to start from scratch in uh, in Hyper B. Excellent connection. Well, that's nice. I mean, this is with Linux, you know, lots in many cases you actually are, especially in um, in um, more problematic cases, you actually end up having to pull down the source code, building stuff yourself. Next step. Okay, now we need to configure it. thing that I'm checking my mouth. Made crappy notes in uh, virtual box. <laughs> mm. Oh, uh, that's actually a good way, you know, if you write an instruction, make sure you actually try and execute it once. Like, just go through it again, because then you will always find something to screw it. Okay, so now we use the standard procedure of Linux-based build logic. So you you download the source code, you go a current directory into the source code, and then the first command you give is you, you say configure. And this um, does a very complicated procedure of figuring out if you can actually build this crap on, on, on your system or not. And it will usually tell you, so, uh, uh, most of the time it will tell you the same things that if, if something's missed. But sometimes you will get very crooked. Yeah, see, something like this, this, this looks good. So it should end, end with a same, it should end without having errors. That's always a positive thing. And then we need git. Because that's not actually. Okay, okay, back again. Back again. Uh, no, I, I, just have to, <laughs> I just have to <laughs> test the the, 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 the exploits right now. Right now. Right now. And, uh, and it has that has that hanging hanging while well, I'm trying to, trying to um, share out share out a, a, um, a screen screen like any like any application, any application window, window that I'm trying to, trying to, to, to 
it's either it's either streaming, streaming or, or even or even lower recording, recording than it will then lock it will lock, lock the computer, whole computer and after and after reboot, reboot, reboot everything. So I just so give up, up, up on that now. So just give up, 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 up to giving up on X and X. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna continue using OBS OBS from time to time to try and just if X if X figure out how to update it so do not fail fail. No no what what? Of course of course figure out where I was again again. Now the, now the virtual ah the, see, ah, the, the virtual, virtual, virtual machine, machine. The, the our, our remote desktop, remote desktop session session died. died so they didn't so they indicate you, know, you get that collision so it, so it thinks that it's, it's logging, logging out, logging out. It's, it's like it's like doesn't know doesn't what, know what display it's display being it's display being display so so now I'm pretty now pretty certain I actually actually take remote desktop desktop again Now of course, now of course, it's going to be interesting. I thought, I thought, sharing the screen um, is, is OBS crash crash the computer. Or is this or is this pure? Is pure? Yeah. So let's see, let's see. Yeah. I try, I try. Mm. Where is where is OBS? Does, does, does window, window capture? capture. Okay, I didn't okay, create, I didn't another, create scene. another scene. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I actually yeah, we can figure this a little. Uh, wait, we, wait, can, um, we can, um, we can just, we can just have one scene. scene. Oh, how oh, was one? How was one? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, about, Sorry about, the about the mess. Okay, 
and I would like to light it on my face. Oh, it's hot, it's hot. It's not as bad as that. Order, order. Move to the top. Oh, that's oh, nice. That's I actually, that actually, actually little, little, little. I have, I have used Dolby, actually. That's, actually, that's quite, it's nice. quite nice. It's all just quite nice. It's all just quite nice. It's all just quite nice. I'm sorry, I'm sorry about, sorry about the noise. Sort of copying out copy the stream. stream. I have no choice to choose the computer. Okay, I'm going to try and figure out how I know you I know you can set up scenes there, there, there. So that's okay. okay. I'll just, I'll just have to figure that out later. Okay, but okay, now we're but back, now in, back here. in here. I don't think I think I should actually Exit, 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 Probably lost all the viewers I had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crashed, crashed. <laughs> no, no. Most people, most people fell up and left. left. I might, I, I might, might, I might do a collation. I might just download, just download the videos, videos and, 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 and then put them all together, 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 upload, 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 upload as one. So this is this, this is a mess. Mm. Okay. Configure, figure, all that's gonna work. work. Mm, get, get installed. Get installed. Oh, oh, let's pull this one again. Stuff, stuff to, to, to get the get mo the get mo get the mo get the get the audio audio modules and then, and then and get them get built and built. built.
Okay, so okay, anybody, so anybody who's now newly, newly joined, joined or, or, or hacking, hacking in, in a virtual Ubuntu to get a, a, a permanent flash player, player. Uh, environment, environment and, and, and to be able to, be able get, to the get the sound to work, to work, to work, work to work hack, to hack, hack, install something, something and configure and something, configure something, something also, 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 also. You know, we're, working, we're working on that. It's <laughs> <laughs> getting, it's getting tired. 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 Yes, yes, see, see, the, the sink, the sink, so on, 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 so Utility. That will be used, will be used to, to um, confirm how things, how things are configured. configured. This is called power meter. It will um, tell you if you're actually succeeded. dummy out here and that's still what we don't want to have. But it's not expected to come off this. Well, that's the check we want to take. So we need to um Four pulse audio. And that means that we need to go and correct the file. Oops. She's in here.
default PA. So don't do this, don't do pseudo. Or whatever other VI editor or whatever you want. Nano is actually quite, quite humane to use. is pointing to the wrong wrong modules. And then that's a bit of preamble that's wrong. So we need to basically get rid of everything we have here. So Say the command line to what I just started. That was a bit stupid because now it's stuck in the virtual machine in, in the virtual box. this before. No, nope, see dummy off for this the default that's not good.
had a nice come on though. Come on line I made just to start. X or D V sync. That's what we want to see. The, the the trickiness here is that when you start this, if I st if I would reboot this now, um, in um, hyper, yeah, it doesn't matter. Re restart uh, this Ubuntu, then it somehow pulls out. It will pick up the wrong configuration. Even though, we, as you saw, that I went in and I, I did the def, I reset the default configuration, and and um, doesn't seem to matter. It will just pick up that same. It'll uh, redirect it down. Okay, now let's see. Now the exciting part is this going to work? And once I haven't tested it on this configuration, I haven't tested it. So I have no idea if this is going to actually do it. I don't know if it's going to go out on the stream. Yeah. And, uh, but there's one nice thing that this is relatively fast compared to when I was doing my virtual box. This is, uh, so I don't know how this is coming over in the stream. can hear it, but we have sound, oh that is just so cool, now this is of course just one of the millions of flash games out there, Oh, this is really cool. 
God, I've been working on this for days. But I must say, the virtual box didn't. I, I couldn't get that to be a uh, good enough performance. It was just really bad. And I've read countless websites with it. Lots of people have been misunderstanding and having problems with the remote desktop. I wonder, you know, either it's not supported in the um, distribution by default, or it's misconfigured in the in the distribution, or you can't add add Pulsar. You, you you can download the source, but you can't compile it. All kinds of weird stuff. But in the the Ubuntu um, edition that I've presented here, this this caused basically the least installation problems. Even though I went through countless pages of um, conflicting instructions how to do different things, and then uh, well, the biggest problem I had on in um, Hyper-V is the, um, actually, I wonder if I should show that. Um, so As I said, I don't even know if the sound is making it into the stream. Well, I think I'll get courageous and we'll share another window here. Where does one... Change the uh, Hyper V Manager. Okay, let's try and share that. Oh, a bad quality picture. Oh, it's not that bad in the string. I need to get into Hyper V Manager. Oh yeah. Anyway, the key issue here is here. Oh, where am I blabbering about? It's not here. It's not in the match, of course. Sorry, wrong place. Or does it use the same? If I bring that up here, just a sec. Showing the, um, you can't show the. The Ubuntu session, Hyper-V session window. Why not? <laughs> that is so strange. Show that then. Window. Multi adapter compiler. Whatever that means. I'm sorry, I'm just I'm having a problem in OBS how to show the. A window where I, where I have a menu item that I want to show, and I can actually not. Um, I can't show it. That sucks.
Ah, we're up there. Oops. I'm show my knife. Uh -huh. What are the cells? <laughs> anyway, um. Uh, See here we have the virtual. So here's the window hyper. No, the remote desktop session. The Ubuntu session running in game. And then here we have the Hyper V um, manager. And here's the actual Ubuntu main terminal, if you want to call that the main um, control session. And in here you have here. You have this one here, enhanced session. And that's a kind of a fake session. What that means is it actually switches to using remote desktop. But it steals the remote desktop from Ubuntu and has it configured the RDB. It reconfigures when you're going, probably when you're going through the steps of installing the um, Hyper-V modules. But then it reconfigures it to use socket only connection for RDB. So it doesn't expose the um, remote desktop to TCP connections. So then you can't connect from the outside world to the desktop. And then it, it calls that mode enhanced. But it's actually cheating. It's, uh, it's just running Microsoft RD RDB software in this terminal here to get all the nifty features like copy paste and drag and drop and crap. So, I, so as you see now, when I've reconfigured it, then you don't have this enhanced mode anymore can't use but I do have a then I have a real uh, remote desktop and this one here I can go to another computer on my network and use an IP the IP address of this machine and I can log in or actually connect to the session and it seems to work fine so no mess to work this order. I need to make, I need to of course set up scenes and stuff because I, I haven't configured OBS at all. There. Oops. Well, anyway, who thought this was fun? I did! <laughs> Because now what I can do is I can I, I can have this running on, on any I can have this um of course any a Hyper V you can install on any um Windows 10 Pro installation I don't know if you can I don't know if you can run Hyper V on on the home editions of Windows 10 but you can run it on any Pro edition of Windows 10. So basically, I can set up any any machine with uh, Windows 10 Pro, and then I can run um, Hyper V, and then I can just transfer this virtual machine to that. And, and my idea was to set up, um, yeah, to to enable my, because I, I mean, remote desktop you have on every Windows 10 machine, so then they can just remote desktop into this desktop, and then uh, the icon for Firefox is just there, and then they, they know how to use a browser, so they just go into whatever website they want to do to play flash flash games, and then they can play their flash games with sound, and then um, yeah, have fun. And we don't have to worry about the first of January or the end of January, because I can lock this virtual machine to actually um, have the um, this all the, this versions of the whole platform. And it will never change. I can take a snapshot of it, and if it ever intend, intends to upgrade it, then I can downgrade it again. I actually should do that now. I will have to take. Take. Alright, that's Oracle. <laughs> I need to go into the Hyper V Manager. Let's take a snapshot. Checkpoint they call it. So I'm taking a checkpoint of the. Uh, and they always love calling these things different names. <laughs>
just do a quick C rebuild here. like to So anyway, here was the last um, point of snow. We jump off here and I'll just mm. oh, installed Git. Get the source. Triple Saudi. And then bootstrap and configure it, make it, install it. And confirm the modules are installed. Install power meter so that will show us if it's actually using the correct um, sound sync. And if it says though what was it that dummy sync the dummy thing then that's wrong. And you won't hear any sound anyway, so you know you'll know that it's wrong. Move myself around. Make everybody seasick. <laughs> And then, um, and then we need to correct the um, default configuration for um, the pulse audio. And this being a weird thing that when you restart it, I know when I restart this Ubuntu installation that it's going to be, the, the, it's going to somehow pick up the, from somewhere it's going to pick up another configuration where you have that dummy, dummy audio output. Actually, or I should actually have the final final instruction. Because that kills it, and then it will automatically restart. And then. The sound will work now for um, YouTube and um, yeah, and anything you want to do on the desktop with the desktop. I mean, as I said, I mean, the main reason I was making this is for the Flash. So now I don't have now I can, you know, because actually they've been having, even independently of this idea that they were going to take Flash away permanently, it was the, um, it was some. Um, there have been issues with the flash on, on the current browser where, like, for example, this uh, Bark Dog game, the, this doesn't start in Chrome, even if Chrome currently supports flash. It, it wasn't starting anymore. So if they can play other flash games, but not this one. So uh, that, that they've also noticed, and the, the games on our, you know, poor public TV station on site for 
for kids. They, they also have many loaves that were cropped out in um, later times. Wow, it's getting a bit late. It's um, past 11 p.m., so I think I'm going to call it now. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. As I said, this was a hacking session, and I'm sorry about the XSplit, but I must say I have to condemn XSplit now. I can't use XSplit. Um, basically, I can't use it if I'm going to share a window or, or uh, an application window. And it doesn't matter on which of my monitors I share, it doesn't have any connection. I haven't found out, I have not been able to identify what causes the total freeze up of the machine. Because everything else works on my machines uh, very well. But it did, it did appear that I haven't, I haven't had that problem um, before. So of course I know if I'm going to want to do an extensive testing, I'll have to go back to an older version of it and see if it still exists there. And then of course the Robust one has free choice. I can only use OBS instead, so I'll just create my scenes and, and, and use OBS. And then, then in a, because I like, kind of like XSplit for certain things, so, so where I don't need to do um, uh, sharing windows, just normal recording or normal uh, talking sessions without having to deal with sharing windows. And, uh, and then, oh, I'm hoping, I can always hope that XSplit will be upgraded someday. It, it does get updates all the time for the plugins and stuff. But anyway, um, I, I think, think we'll call it a day. Uh,